This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Ease, California's top one-stop website for legal cannabis delivery. When it comes to getting your legal Golden State marijuana delivered, don't trust anyone but the best. And in that realm, that choice is easy. You just open up Ease.com. Ease is fairly obsessed with making sure they are fully in compliance with all of California's various laws around marijuana delivery, and they extend that focus on staying on the right side of state law throughout their network of partner dispensaries. You know you're in the California clear when you order through Ease.com, which is spelled E-A-Z-E. And don't forget, Get for lots of super useful bits of industry information, knowledge, and wisdom, head over to ease.com slash blog, where you can read their 2017 State of Cannabis Data Report, as well as lots of other smart pieces of legal cannabis analysis. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Tuesday, February 20th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 435 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day brings us out to California, where a new report just issued by the California Growers Association shows that the transition into being a fully licensed marijuana cultivator is not one that the vast majority of Golden State cannabis farmers are making. In fact, according to the report, less than 1% of California pot farmers have gone legit. It's estimated that the state has just over 68,000 marijuana farmers, but has only granted cultivation licenses to around 700. There are a number of overlapping reasons for the slowness by which California marijuana farmers are embracing legal growing, most of which involve the higher costs of staying compliant with state law. This is one of California's more interesting legal cannabis storylines that we'll make sure to keep a watch on. Continuing on the theme of our first story, we have a guest post over at New Cannabis Ventures that dives into some of the numbers behind California's marijuana business licensing, particularly those for cultivation. Ed Keating, Chief Data Officer at Cannabis Media, parsed the licensing numbers and found that just 15 companies hold 10% of all the cultivation licenses issued so far. While this consolidation shouldn't surprise any students of economics, it's caused a lot of controversy in the state because the original language of adult use measure Prop 64 included some protections for smaller scale farmers against consolidation. Those protections were dropped in recent months as California started to actually implement the measure. Ed does a good job in his piece over New Cannabis Ventures, so I'd direct you over there for the full read. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at MJ Today Daily. Our final top story of the day was scooped up by our buddy Tom Angel over at Marijuana Moment, who noticed that the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is now admitting that it does have the ability to study the use of medical cannabis as an effective treatment for military veterans living with various health conditions. This is a well-treaded storyline that has seen the, the VA in the past outright deny its power to study the efficacy of medical marijuana, citing its federal status as a Schedule One drug, even though that status doesn't actually bar it from conducting research. Tom picked up on a recent change to a VA website on PTSD that reads in part, quote, The VA is not currently able to prescribe medical marijuana to veterans, but can look at marijuana as an option for treating veterans, unquote. This is a fairly deep issue worthy of a full read, so I'd pop over to Tom's piece for more. Those are the top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz it on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Ease, California's top one-stop website for legal cannabis delivery. One of the things that sets Ease apart within California's legal marijuana industry is just how focused they are on always following state law around marijuana delivery. That's important right now because there are a lot of delivery services that are not being so stringent about being in compliance with the law. Don't trust your cannabis delivery dollars to anyone but the best, most in-compliant companies. That's where Ease shines. 
And because they're super picky about which dispensaries they choose to partner up with, you know you'll always find top quality products at great prices. Put the power of the Ease platform to work for you over at Ease.com, which is spelled E-A-Z-E. And if you happen to live outside the state or in a part that hasn't yet opened up delivery, you can console yourself with an informative and fruitful visit over to ease.com slash blog, where you can find all kinds of valuable insight and analysis, including their 2017 State of Cannabis Data Report. One last time, that's ease.com slash blog. All right, time for the Blitz. Denver's Westward does the world a good turn by looking at the anti-cannabis point of view being pushed at the Colorado Gazette, the Colorado newspaper owned by conservative billionaire Philip Anschutz, a noted prohibitionist who is not afraid to throw his money around buying influence. It's always a good thing to understand the motivations and worldviews driving the makers of your media, so I'd pop over to read this one for sure. Keeping our sights up in the Mile High State for a bit, we find the Colorado Department of Transportation taking a year off from an advertising campaign stressing the importance of not driving under the influence of cannabis to reassess their efforts, which today include a lot of outreach at events like concerts and car shows. Colorado Public Radio has an article up examining how the state's transportation officials have been trying to get their message out. Not a bad read. Colorado holds on to the headline spotlight for one more story as new data just released by the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment shows that legal marijuana cultivators are using almost 4% of the city's total electricity, which is a substantial amount. There's some good news in the data in that it appears that the industry is getting better about how much energy it takes to grow each unit of marijuana, but the overall load is on the rise. Marijuana Business Daily's chart of the week tracks two variables out of Massachusetts, showing the paired rise in the number of active medical marijuana patients and the number of open medical marijuana dispensaries. As of December of last year, those two numbers stood at 45,319 patients, getting their medicine from a total of 19 dispensaries. As they always do, Marijuana Business Daily includes some handy context with the chart. Pop over for a view. California's Daily Democrat looks at the issue of the growing power and clout of legal cannabis in the political arena. Society's growing acceptance of all things marijuana is helping to ease the discomfort with which standard politicians treat the idea of legal marijuana, as is the mountain of money starting to flow their way in political contributions from industry players. In a show full of stories worth clicking over to, this one's a good one to add to the list. This headline is a good reminder that it is never in your best interest to give police officers any more information than legally required during a traffic stop. The Indiana Court of Appeals just ruled in favor of a police officer who searched a motorist's car and found a couple of grams of cannabis after being told that the driver had once had marijuana in the car when it was in Washington state, where it is legal. The case involved the stated reasoning for the search, with the police officer claiming that the admittance that there had been marijuana in the car previously was enough probable cause for a legal search. And obviously, the motorist and his lawyer took issue with that reasoning. In the decision in favor of the police officer, the Indiana State Justices noted that the driver was under no obligation to answer the police officer's questions and that his admittance was strong enough probable cause. For a bunch of great videos on how to actually speak with police during any encounter, head over to flexyourrights.org, which is an invaluable resource put together by my friend Steve Silverman. Once again, that's flexyourrights.org. Rounding out our show today is Mr. Tom Angel over at Marijuana Moment, who spotted some positive comments about medical marijuana by Michelle Roberts, Executive Director of the National Basketball Players Association, or NBPA. In an interview published yesterday with SB Nation, Ms. Roberts said that she personally thought that marijuana should be removed from the NBA's list of banned substances and that her focus was on protecting her players from a, quote, crazed attorney general, unquote. 
She also said that the NBPA is having internal discussions over medical marijuana prompted by pro-medical marijuana statements made by former NBA Commissioner David Stern. This is another good one to open up for the full read. As he likes to do, Tom packed his piece with lots of good background and context. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Ease, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.